Just the term barking, because I just looked at the, um, the, the final. Could you say the term again? Barking. So barking radiation or. Um, oh. Um, magnetic barking? Because we never went over any of that. I didn't know, but I saw the terms on the, on the final last week. Breaking? Oh, is it breaking? B R A. Oh, yeah, sorry, breaking. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that one is, um, I can explain the question. So it's, uh, it's uh, meant to be, um, so I don't, because this is physics, science, where you can drive stuff. I don't, I'm not simply asking you to recall information that I already told you. I'm asking, I'm, you know, the ideally the way physics or math education works is I'm giving you a set of tools, and this is a set of tools that's uh, applicable to a wider range of situations, things that uh, I never told you, things that I couldn't even imagine, something that you might be seeing in, in research. So in some um, exam questions, I try to do that, as in I'm giving you a situation that you are not expected to have seen. That breaking radiation or Bram Stralong is uh, an example of that. As in that semester, students who are taking that final exam never saw it. They, um, <laughs> like this was a new situation for them. Um, so, but, you know, for you it's different because you have seen that this is in one of my past exam questions, so it doesn't hurt to know. So let's uh, just, uh, let me just try to explain this from the, so you know, the, the reason I'm saying this is to clarify that you are not expected to know what Bram Stralung is. Um, like, no, that comes up when you study particle physics after a while. So you are not expected to know what it is, or you are not expected to know what breaking radiation is. What uh, someone taking this class would have been expected to do is having read all this description, Answer the question I'm asking. Um, what question am I asking? Okay, so let me read it. <laughs> Bram Stralung is a phenomenon that occurs, blah, blah, blah. As a high energy electron slows down, as the electron is deflect going through a material, blah, 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 loses energy uh, through emission of electromagnetic waves. All right, so that's the description that there is some kind of radiation that happens. Uh, it happens as a charged particle slows down. And what the question is asking is, describe how it happens and explain the role of Faraday's law. So this is where, so you know, you have never seen breaking radiation. You just were told about it. So the only information that you have available is your knowledge of electrostatic, uh, the laws of electricity and magnetism, and I guess somehow that Faraday's law is important. <laughs> um, and that, so, so, you know, this is the situation where it helps to have a visualization skill. You are imagining a high energy particle or a high, high speed electron is coming in, and somehow you are describing this as slowing down so that it's, mo so it's, uh, you know, I can't do this as well. So, you know, this is how fast it is, and it's going to slow down and come to a stop somehow. So the question you should be asking when you are visualizing it is as this is happening, what else is happening? If you have a charged particle that's moving through space, if it's moving at constant speed, then nothing interesting is really happening, right? You could look at this charged particle um, as a current if it's moving at some constant speed. So as this is moving through at a constant speed, it will be generating some magnetic field going around it. You could look at that, but all right. But the situation this is, is this describing is where um, this, as it's going through, there's some um, like atomic nucleus here that's generating electric fields. So this electric field, uh, I guess it should be here. This electric field is causing this to bend around. So as this charged particle bends, uh, what else is happening? Can you describe some magnetic field and electric field is changing? Uh, so th there will be change in magnetic flux, and the way it's happening is as this charged particle is passing. So when it bends, so. So when it, uh, when it bends around, the, uh, how do I put it? Um, the, this particle is accelerating. So 
the magnetic field that's being um, so uh, how yeah so that's why it's a conceptual question I think I don't um, Not quite. In the northern lights case, that's more of a magnetostatic case because you are looking at, you have some magnetic field generated by Earth and the charged particle is moving in a way that it goes helically around it. Um, here it's really, um, so that, that's um, here it's different. So you are looking at where the, the path of the charged particle is changing so it's accelerating. So I guess here's the way you could maybe look at it. Um, so helps to have. Let me write down uh, Maxwell. Actually, I have uh, Maxwell's equations in one of these um, tabs. Um, so for the answer to the question I was repeatedly asking, you know, as this happens, what else? What else happens? This is the situation that, um, so when you are trying to look at what else happens, what's the effect electromagnetically is going to happen, uh, what you should have in this mind are this set of equations, the Maxwell's equations, Gauss's law, uh, Ampere's law, and Faraday's law. So, um, when you have a charged particle in space, this will generate electric field, according to Gauss's law. If this charged particle is moving at some particular speed, so it looks like a current, then it'll generate magnetic field, according to Gauss's law, according to Ampere's law. So the question itself, you know, this is the hint that's given to you in the question. Um, what is the role of Faraday's law? So, so you could actually start from the end point. Well, this is Faraday's law. What does it take for Faraday's law to come into effect? Um, you see that, so this is the result of uh, the law being if in effect. And what it's needed, what is needed for this Faraday's law to be brought in is that you need to have a time-bearing magnetic flux. So, when you have a, so this is the part that I struggle um, with um, because if I imagine myself as an observer in space, then as this particle goes through, I do see time varying magnetic field because um, if I have a single charged particle that's moving at some speed, constant speed V naught, then what's associated with this particle are these sets of electromagnetic fields. So it's going to have electric fields pointing away like this. It'll have these electric fields. And because this kind of looks like a current, it also has magnetic fields associated with it. It looks like reaching the right hand roll. You have magnetic field coming out over here, going into kind of like this. And these magnetic field lines, when you imagine drawing it, it sort of looks like a circles going around this. It's a, a weaker as you are farther away, stronger right here. And when I imagine this particle moving past me, as an observer just standing here, looking at, um, looking at what kind of fields are moving past me, I see this magnetic field flux uh, around, for example, magnetic field flux around um, through this loop. Oops. Magnetic flux uh, through this loop. I see changing as this magnetic field sort of passes through. So I think what I have to sort of for this to make more physically meaningful sense. What I, I think it maybe this is easier this way. Um, I have to imagine myself being in the reference frame of this charge, right? Because that's the way to make sure that when this charge is moving at a constant speed, then nothing funny happens. 
Because if I'm in the reference, if I'm moving along with this charge, then in this reference frame of this charge, there is no magnetic field. There is no current. All I have are electric fields. Now, what the question is describing is this charge accelerating, uh, the, its velocity changing. So if I start off with a, in the reference frame of the charge, then at some later moment in time, as this uh, atomic nucleus comes and hits it, this will accelerate. Then I can ask the question, what else happens as this charge accelerates? As this accelerates, I'm going to see magnetic fields being generated. Those are time-dependent magnetic fields. So according to Faraday's law, there's going to be electric field generated, induced around the magnetic field. Well, that's where I realized my full form of Ampere's law, which says that this will generate magnetic field. So the electric field that's induced by changing magnetic field, it'll induce magnetic field it'll induce electric field. So that back and forth, so that's the electromagnetic wave. And um, so that electromagnetic wave being generated that way will lead to um, the energy, the, the electron losing energy. So actually this is um, something that we didn't quite address in this class. Uh, so that's uh, I think what this answer is describing. Um, and you know, I'm not really looking for uh, anything more comp detailed than that. Um, this is an aspect that we kind of skipped over in this class that eventually comes up uh, when you take physics 4C. So this is how we have described um, electron moving in a magnetic field. We say, you know, electron is uh, moving along and if you, if you put a magnetic field, it's gonna start to go in circle. So it's going to start to go in circle something like this. And that's where our analysis have stopped so far. But what people realized soon when they were trying to use this as a model of an atom is that this charge that's moving in a circle is an accelerating charge. This involves change of velocity. This involves time dependent change of magnetic and electric field. Meaning this is going to emit electromagnetic radiation Electromagnetic radiations take away energy. It takes energy to emit EM wave. So this oscillating thing uh, loses energy. So um, in physics 4C, when you look at stability of a hydrogen atom, this was a problem that physicists were struggling with. And the answer to that was quantum mechanics, which is not subject of this class. But this is sort of a um, glimpse at that that involves nothing other than what we talk about in this class that when you have a charged particle whose path has to bend because of external electric field, that bending of path, in this case, actually has to involve loss of energy through emission of EM radiation. Yeah, yeah so you know, um, when I was grading it, I'm pretty sure um, I was giving full credit to anyone essentially who mentioned these two aspects of Faraday's law, that, um, that in, uh, in, in two aspects of Maxwell's equations. Faraday's law and the Maxwell term in um, um, Ampere's law. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if I would do preparations based on something like that because, by definition, you don't know what new thing I'm going to ask you. Um, so what I would focus on is conceptual understanding of these things. Like it's not enough that you have this memorized. You should know what these mean. Uh, that's what I say in the study guide. You should know what story each equation is telling.